Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Merovingians. The Merovingian dynasty was a family of Frankish kings who ruled over Dark Age Europe in the 5th century. They were also known as the Long-Haired Kings because of the tradition they had of keeping their hair long and flowing like romance novel heroes or elven kings. Or you know, like Legolas in Lord of the Rings. Anyway, I digress. If you've never heard of the Merovingians, you aren't alone. Though they played a major role in reshaping Europe after the collapse of the Roman Empire, they disappeared after 250 years, when they were usurped by the Carolingian dynasty, whose most famous ruler was Charlemagne. But the small role of the Merovingians in global history isn't the only reason you haven't heard of them. There are some rumors that powerful forces out there, including the Vatican, would prefer you never heard of these people. This is because they identified themselves as the direct descendants of Jesus Christ. According to the Merovingians, they were the rightful kings of the world. They believed that Jesus Christ escaped his crucifixion and fled to what is now modern France, previously the kingdom of Francia. But he didn't escape alone. He went on the run with Mary Magdalene. The two settled there, had children, and those descendants allegedly went on to become the powerful Merovingian kings. We of course have no proof that this is true. We do have historical records of the various Frankish kings who apparently shared the blood of Jesus in their veins. But 1,500 years later, it's impossible for anyone to truly know the bloodline of the ancient kings. What do you think of this controversial claim? Too close to the Da Vinci Code, or do you think it's possible? Number 9. The Dark History of Valentine's Day Love it or hate it, Valentine's Day is widely regarded as the most romantic day of the year. But the history behind this candy and romance-fueled greeting card holiday is dark and foreboding. Although nobody has been able to pinpoint the exact origin of Valentine's Day, the very first time it was ever celebrated, we do know where it started. From February 13th to February 15th, ancient Romans celebrated Lupercalia. It wasn't celebrated with giving chocolates to your partner or going to a romantic dinner. That is the much more recent Victorian interpretation. No, in ancient Rome, it was a pagan holiday fueled by fires, passion, violence, and animal sacrifice. It started with the sacrifice of goats and a dog in honor of the wolf mother who nursed Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome. There were special priests who organized this festival known as the Luperci, who would dip their knives in blood and cut the skin off the animals, then go about hitting women who wanted to have children, as it was believed that by the skin touching them during this festival, they would become more fertile. According to religious studies professor Noel Lensky, the Romans were a bunch of depraved, intoxicated maniacs. But the fun didn't stop there. They also practiced a matchmaking lottery, where the men pulled names of women from a vessel. These couples would be matched up, regardless of if they wanted to or not, for the duration of the festival. The name Valentine comes from the execution of a priest on February 14th in the 3rd century. This man was honored by the Catholic Church as a martyr, but there were several other Christian martyrs also called Valentine. In the 5th century, when the Roman Empire was Christian, a pope ordered the festival of Lupercalia to be banned and instead would be honored in a more somber, orderly way under the name of St. Valentine's Day. Number 8. The Buried City of Selinunte Something happened 2,500 years ago in ancient Greece that you probably haven't been taught in history class. It was one of the greatest tragedies of ancient times, and it happened in what is now Sicily. Archaeologists recently dug up the buried city of Selinunte, where they say the local inhabitants were slaughtered, and whoever survived was taken as a slave by invaders from North Africa in the 5th century BC. Historians have known about what happened here for a long time, but it wasn't until recently that archaeologists were able to see the evidence with their own eyes. After the people of Selinunte were slaughtered or taken away, the city was largely abandoned. It then became buried over thousands of years as sand covered the buildings and they slowly sank into the earth. The city was once prosperous and flourishing. There was a nice harbor, an industrial zone, and residential neighborhoods. But that all changed when African troops from Carthage, what is now modern Tunisia, invaded the city and butchered 16,000 Greeks. The attack was unannounced, unprompted, and totally unnecessary. Women and children were cut down in the streets. An estimated 5,000 men were taken as slaves, with many thousands of women and children as well. One day the city was bustling and vibrant, and the next day it was a ghost town. Number 7. 
the Nephilim. In the book of Genesis, it is described how God created heaven and earth, how Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, and how Noah survived the great flood with a boat full of animals. It also tells about the fallen angels known as Nephilim. The book of Genesis claims that when these angels fell from heaven, they wandered the earth as giants. The entire story is in just three verses, and yet it has had such profound consequences throughout history. People have always wondered where these Nephilim may have gone if they really did walk the earth. And if they were real creatures, does that mean that giants actually existed? There's no possible way to answer this, but there is a piece of the story you may not have heard before. While the Nephilim in Genesis were only mentioned briefly and their purpose vague at best, Jewish writers really liked the idea. In the text we know as the Book of Enoch, likely written in the 2nd century AD, the story was improved. There was added a tale of 200 angels who plotted to steal the most beautiful wives from the humans. They were called the Watchers, and their desire for human women corrupted the world. After they stole the women, God cast them out of heaven and they became the Nephilim. They were evil and corrupted all of mankind, teaching women charms and enchantments and turning them into witches. They also taught the men how to use metal to create swords and knives for war. What started as just three lines in Genesis was escalated to an entirely different proportion in the Book of Enoch. Number 6. The Lizard People Apparently there are lizard people living underground in California. At least, that's what the local legend and folklore of Los Angeles County says. The story of the lizard people underneath Los Angeles goes back 5,000 years to the ancient Hopi people. They claimed that a race of lizard people built three giant underground cities along the Pacific coast. One was beneath LA, and the locations of the others were unknown. The cities were apparently built as protection against terrible fires raging on the surface. The entirety of California found itself engulfed in fire and so the lizard people retreated underground. But here's where the story gets confusing. According to the Hopi legend, these people weren't actually lizards, as in reptilians. They were people who worshipped a lizard. This explains why they had such an affinity with building subterranean cities. Throughout the years, the interpretation of the story has changed dramatically. It went from a race of indigenous people who revered lizards to a literal race of lizard-human hybrids. Sadly, no underground city has ever actually been found. Mining engineer George Shufield searched for it in 1933 and apparently found a shaft that went 350 feet beneath the city, but he had to give up his efforts of locating the subterranean structures after a terrible cave-in. After he died in 1957, no one else went looking for them. Do you think there might be an ancient city under LA? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more videos coming up. Number 5. The Bloodthirsty Carthaginians Archaeologists have come across overwhelming evidence that the ancient civilization of Carthage, in what is now North Africa, practiced something atrocious. What's truly amazing about the discovery is that for decades, scholars have adamantly denied that the Carthaginians did this. And yet now, researchers from Oxford University have confirmed that parents in ancient Carthage sacrificed their own children as offerings to the gods. There are ancient accounts by the Romans and Greeks that say the Carthaginians killed their own children. It was just something people knew up until around the 1970s. That was when scholars argued against the theory, citing it as racist propaganda. They said it was something that Greeks and Romans said to slander the Carthaginians. But based on evidence found in cemeteries throughout Carthage, as well as Sicily, Sardinia, and Malta, it really did happen. When children were only a few weeks old, they were taken to these locations, called tophets, sacrificed, and then cremated. The evidence comes from the discovery of both animal sacrifices in the same area and the inscriptions above the slain infants that indicated the parents' prayers asking for blessings. And it was all so the parents could be blessed by the gods. Number 4. The Secret Revelations of Jesus In an ancient Egyptian trash dump, archaeologists found what they believe to be the secret revelations of Jesus. The document is a rare manuscript discovered amongst piles of ancient tax receipts and bills of sales for donkeys from the 5th century. It's actually a manuscript from the New Testament that never actually made it into the Bible called the First Apocalypse of James. But it's not the only time a copy of this has been found. The only other version was found in the Nag Hammadi Library in Egypt back in 1945, buried in jars underneath the ground. 
The text was likely stashed there around the year 367, after the Bishop of Alexandria, Athanasius, decided which 27 books would be put into the New Testament. This particular story was deemed too heretical to be put into the Bible. It's another great example of how the stories in the great book were chosen for inclusion or discarded by powerful people long ago. This story is considered a forbidden text because of the way it portrays Jesus. Whoever wrote it described Jesus as more of a normal human than a messiah. It's said in the text that Jesus taught people the world they were living in was a prison created by an evil god, as if they were living in some kind of terrible matrix. He said the world was guarded by demonic figures he called archons, and that the only way past these demons and into the afterlife was with special passwords. You can probably see why this story never made it into the official Bible. Number 3. Royal Eunuchs In Imperial China, the emperor kept a huge harem of women. We already know that the ancient rulers of China had large groups of kept women at their disposal for both pleasure and procreation. But what a lot of people don't know is that there was a hierarchy inside every emperor's harem. The lady on top was the official wife, or the empress. Then there were the consorts, higher-ranking women but with no real power. The ones on the bottom were concubines. During the Ming Dynasty, between 1368 and 1644, every emperor held a ceremony in the Forbidden City, in which he would choose all his favorite girls aged between 14 and 16. These girls were basically slaves. And now we're getting to the part that may surprise you. The emperor also had a small army of eunuchs to take care of his hundreds and hundreds of female slaves. Because ordinary men were not allowed anywhere near them, the emperor would have thousands of servants be castrated so that they held no threat to his treasured consorts and concubines. They would live in the harem, taking care of everyone's needs. But that wasn't all of it. Concubines met a very tragic fate whenever the emperor died. He could have hundreds of them at any given time, but when he passed away, they were all rounded up and sacrificed, usually buried alive, so that they could pleasure the emperor in the afterlife. Number 2. Devil Worship in the Middle Ages In the Middle Ages, serious witch hunts began. The church launched the Inquisition, and women all throughout Europe were targeted as Satan worshippers and evil sorceresses. And while you are probably familiar with many of the atrocities committed by the church to combat what they saw as the brides of the devil, there is one piece of history you might not know. Scholars believe the whole idea of devil worship may have been fabricated by the church itself. After the disintegration of Rome and pagan ideology, Christianity swept across Europe, but it likely didn't penetrate some of the more rural areas for hundreds of years, where pagan religions continued unhindered. Plus, Christianity was typically practiced at the same time as many of the older religions. There were even hybrid religions such as dualism that mixed Christianity with the belief in more natural deities. Obviously, the church didn't like this. It's been suggested that in order to have Christianity fully adopted by every last citizen in Europe, they created a common villain. To control pockets of people they viewed as heretics and to maintain their control, they came up with devil worship. They accused people hunted down people they said were involved, and through these efforts, paganism was completely abolished. The church cemented their influence over the land, their influence lasting even today. Number 1. The Necronomicon The Necronomicon is arguably the most nefarious book ever, but it never existed. This book was created by H.P. Lovecraft in his stories of cosmic terror. It then became even more famous when it was used in the Evil Dead movie to summon terrible demons. But fortunately for all of us, no such book has ever existed. But there are some forbidden texts from medieval Europe that were said to do the same things as the Necronomicon. For example, the Grand Grimoire is a book of black magic that's been dated back as far as 1421. Some scholars believe it was written in the 19th century as a hoax, but nobody really knows. It definitely couldn't have been published later than 1701. In any case, it contains ancient writings as old as King Solomon. Within the book are instructions on how to summon Lucifer, how to strike a deal with the devil, and how to bend lesser demons to do one's bidding. Unlike the Necronomicon, this is a very real book that you can use to try and summon demons. It's hopefully not going to work, but all the instructions are there anyway. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time for more amazing videos. Bye!